Hello everyone, my name is Teresa and today I'm presenting our work titled Synthetic Data Anonymization Groundhog Day. And to start with, I want to give a bit of context and frame the question we were trying to answer. I'm sure most of you will be familiar with the basic dilemma of privacy preserving data publishing, where we want to find an anonymization mechanism that takes a raw data set that contains some sensitive information and generates a sanitized version of this data that we can share, which on the one hand retains the utility of the data for statistical analysis, but on the other hand prevents the leakage of sensitive information about individuals like the things that we were concerned about and the reason why we decided to use an anonymization mechanism in the first place. Why this is a non-trivial task is because there is a tension between preserving information for analysis, but at the same time hide it from adversaries. This dilemma is what is often referred to as the privacy utility trade-off of privacy preserving data publishing. What we want to achieve as a data holder is to find an anonymization mechanism that maximizes this trade-off and gives us high privacy and utility at the same time. The problem is that traditional sanitization techniques have been shown to provide a very poor trade-off. If the sanitized data retains the utility of the original data set, it provides little protection against privacy attacks. Recently, however, synthetic data has been as advertised as a novel data anonymization solution that enables the protection of personally identifiable, identifiable information, but preserves the statistical properties of the data for analysis. In other words, synthetic data is pro promised to be a privacy preserving data publishing mechanism that addresses the shortcomings of previous anonymization techniques and provides us with a perfect privacy utility trade-off. The question is whether this promise actually holds true. While it is certainly a very appealing proposition, so far we haven't seen a good thorough evaluation of this claim. There are two open questions we need to answer in order to assess this claim. First, how do we evaluate the privacy utility trade-off of an anonymization mechanism? And then where in this landscape does synthetic data lie? Is it really the holy grail of privacy preserving data publishing or is synthetic data more like traditional sanitization? What I'm presenting today is a framework that answers these two questions. This framework is also available as an open source Python library and can be used to evaluate the privacy gain of any data anonymization mechanism. To start with, let's answer the question how we quantify the privacy gain of an anonymization mechanism. The first important observation that we made when we tried to answer this question is that we need to look at synthetic data as an anonymization mechanism. That means a way to publish data sets that are useful for all sorts of analysis tasks, just like what traditional anonymization tried to achieve. This observation had three implications for the framework that we designed. So first, we decided that we need to consider an adversary that has access to a single copy of synthetic data rather than query or white box access to a model. This stands a bit in contrast with some of the previous evaluation papers that treated synthetic data publishing more as another type of machine learning task and evaluated its privacy as such. Second, we decided that we need to look at the risks relevant in the data sharing scenario, which are the risks of linkability and inference. And last, we need a framework that allows us to compare synthetic data to traditional sanitization techniques. Based on these observations, we formalized a framework that allows data holders to evaluate synthetic data as a novel anonymization mechanism for data publishing. We start by modeling each privacy concern that we have about publishing the raw data R as an adversary that targets an individual record and aims to infer a secret about this record. So for instance, 
an adversary that already knows some attributes about a target record and tries to find out whether this record is present in the sensitive data set. This is the classical linkage attack scenario, which was demonstrated in practice many times. For each concern, we then estimate the adversary success of making a correct guess about the target secret, given either access to the raw data R or the synthetic or standardized data S, and then compare whether publishing S in place of R substantially reduces the adversary success. A bit more formally, for each privacy concern, we define an adversary specific advantage measure that captures how much risk publishing a raw or synthetic data set that includes the target record incurs compared to a data set without the target. Given the advantage measure, we can then quantify the privacy gain of publishing the synthetic data in place of the raw data as the reduction in the adversary's advantage when given access to S rather than R. Under some assumptions, the privacy gain typically ranges between zero and one, where a zero gain means that publishing a synthetic version of the data actually does not reduce the adversary's advantage compared to the scenario in which we had published the raw data. Ideally, we want to observe a gain of one for all records in the raw data. This indicates that the synthetic data does provide good protection against the previously leakage of data publishing. A positive gain somewhere between these two points indicates that publishing S does reduce the adversary's advantage to some extent, but does not give perfect protection. Using our framework, we ran an empirical evaluation to compare the privacy gain of three different types of anonymization mechanisms. On the very left, we test the privacy gain of a traditional sanitization procedure that uses things like suppression and generalization to protect against privacy attacks. Baynet is a commonly used generative model that produces synthetic data, and PrivBay is a differentially private version of this model. In this plot here, we're showing the expected privacy gain for five specific target records. What we find is that traditional data sanitization, as expected, provides low gain for some records. Publishing synthetic data only provides a higher gain in privacy. And differentially private synthetic data publishing provides us with the best privacy gain. As a small interesting side note, the second big benefit of an empirical privacy evaluation framework is that it enables us to empirically assess whether certain synthetic data generation mechanisms fulfill their formal privacy guarantees. What we show here is the initial evaluation results for two very popular differentially private generative models, PrivBay and Patagon. Thanks to the DP guarantees, we can calculate a theoretical lower bound on the expected privacy gain and check whether this bound is met. What we found for a number of implementations is that they actually violate their formal privacy guarantees. So we first had to fix these formal violations in the implementations before we got the expected results and the promised privacy gain. But coming back to our main question, we find that indeed synthetic data from some models, differentially private ones in particular, can provide us with a high gain in privacy. The important question is whether this high gain in privacy can be achieved at a low cost in utility so that synthetic data really does provide the perfect trade-off it is promised to. To answer this question, we again first have to look at what is the desired function of synthetic data. As we discussed before, synthetic data is advertised as a novel data anonymization solution that enables data holders to publish data sets that can act as a replacement for the raw or anonymized data. The promise of synthetic data is that it preserves all the benefits of microdata publishing, that is, full flexibility over the analysis functions that we evaluate over the data, as well as to allow us the statistical analysis of fine-grained patterns, such as outlier analysis, that might be hard to achieve with other types of data releases. So analogous to the question we asked to assess the privacy of synthetic data publishing, 
the utility side of our framework tests whether an analyst who receives S instead of R can still conduct their analysis equally well. To do so, we define a utility function, for instance, a simple machine learning task and test how much training the model on S reduces the test accuracy compared to a model trained on R. And already with this simple utility function, we can show that actually synthetic data does not, as promised, provide a much higher gain in privacy at a lower cost and utility than traditional sanitization. In summary, our empirical evaluation demonstrates that unfortunately, but maybe unsurprisingly, synthetic data is not the promised silver bullet solution to privacy preserving data publishing. Here in the top row, we show again the privacy gain of generative models with different privacy guarantees. The bottom row plot then shows the error for a utility function that compares how well the synthetic data preserves some summary statistics of the raw data. As we can see by comparing, for instance, the non-private Bayonet model to its differentially private version with an epsilon of one, a higher gain in privacy comes at a significant cost and utility. The utility error of the synthetic data produced by the differentially private models is orders of magnitudes larger than that of the non-private model. To conclude, we present a framework to evaluate the privacy utility trade-off of synthetic data publishing and compare it to that of traditional anonymization mechanisms. Synthet and we find with our empirical evaluation that synthetic data is subject to the same limitations as traditional sanitization. Thank you very much for your attention and please don't hesitate to reach out to us with any questions you might have.